to Aesthetic Chat with Kiki. I'm your host, Kiana Gamble, or you can call me Kiki, whatever you really prefer. I'm so excited to introduce to you all my latest adventure, which is this podcast. I created the podcast because I felt like there was nothing else like this, and this is something I really wish I had when I was trying to get into the industry. I'll be featuring different injectors each episode to kind of have them explain their stories, give you guys a little insight on the industry, and give all my listeners any advice they have for people trying to become a part of the industry. I want to kick off my very first episode with talking about my story and my journey um, into healthcare and really into the aesthetic industry. I am still so new to aesthetics, but almost daily I'm getting DMs about how did you do it? What book should I read? Any advice? So I hope that this podcast can help any of you guys listening out there. So a little backstory on me. I was raised in Spokane, Washington after my two amazing parents adopted me from China when I was only 10 months old. One of my favorite things to tell people is that my mom looks looks absolutely nothing like me. She is blonde hair, blue eyed, 5'7" absolutely gorgeous but we just look nothing alike that's actually how i introduced myself to melissa berg by the way which we'll get to that so growing up i always knew i wanted to be in some aspect of healthcare. um if you would have asked anyone who knew me when i was growing up i would tell them that i wanted to be a doctor and so after i graduated from high school i did the whole pre-med track went to the university of washington and just started chugging along on those pre-med prereqs It was right around when we had to apply to our majors at UW where I decided I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I want to have a family and I don't want to be in school that long and I didn't want the debt that came with it. And so I really thought a lot about it and then thought, well, nursing is the next best thing. I can still be in healthcare. I can still have a life and I can still care for people. So I really changed my trajectory. I applied to nursing school. I became a certified nursing assistant. Worked in many different settings, um, taking care of the elderly. Worked in assisted living, worked in um, long-term care, worked in transitional care units. Which I'm going to be honest, that was some of the most hard, back-breaking work literally to do. But it made me a better nurse in the long run. I was so far ahead of my peers in nursing school. So it just made the transition into nursing school so much easier. And I was honestly, seriously, a much better nurse because I knew how to handle patients. I knew how to provide patient care before I even looked at assessment skills or anything like that. So anyone who's listening to this and is just in the beginning stages of trying to become a nurse or is in nursing school, seriously consider becoming a CNA first. Okay, so then I got my offer into nursing school. It was not at UW. I ended up going to WSU, Washington State University, and I actually got hired as a nurse technician, which is like a glorified CNA because I got to pass non-narcotic meds. So I got offered what was back then my dream job right out of nursing school. It was on a step-down ICU unit, um, a lot of cardiac telemetry, um, strokes, um, stuff like that. But I got offered a day shift position with the most awesome crew ever. And so I never got to, never had to do nights, which was honestly I'm so lucky for. I was a brand new baby nurse right at in the height of the pandemic of COVID-19, um, it was one of the most challenging times. It was like drinking through a fire hose and also being just so scared of not knowing what's next. Um, each day was different. Each day there was new information coming out and each day we saw sicker and sicker patients. So it was a very scary time. But I learned, grew, and in terms of being a nurse, I grew so much in my assessment skills, my everything. So most people actually don't know this, but um, my Instagram page, at aestheticnurse.kiki, I reserved that when I was in nursing school. So a year into nursing school, when I still had a year left, I looked up this handle, saw if anyone had taken it yet, and I claimed it. So mid-pandemic this last January is when I finally was like, 
I'm going to take classes. I'm going to learn what I need to really do to get into this aesthetic industry because I am honestly just fed up with the hospital nursing and short staffing and just I'm very small. So probably stopping what I'm like 130 pounds. And I was taking care of patients that were 300 and 400 pounds. And when you don't have the staff to help you, it's just not a safe environment for someone or really anyone that is supposed to be doing full patient care on these people. In the very beginning, I think I just Googled like aesthetic nursing or how to become an aesthetic nurse. And you find very minimal information and you find a million different courses that pop up and the price tags on these courses are definitely not cheap. My next step, I started following a bunch of injectors, um, seeing what they have recommended. A lot of people put like textbooks that they read in their highlights. So I just started deep diving into big aesthetic injectors names and Instagrams in the industry and I was trying to figure out as much information as I could just from their pages. I started reaching out to injectors via DM, email, just asking them what their advice was for me and kind of what textbooks to read and just introducing myself. Um, at this point I thought what is what do I have to lose by them potentially just not opening my DM DM or reading it and not doing anything with it or responding. And so I, to get into this industry, I really did a lot of things that I would say were were out of my comfort zone, um, but definitely paid off. A little tip, um, when I was DMing these injectors, I had done a lot of research on them, kind of their story. And then I had like very specific questions to ask them. Just because now being in the the industry, I get a lot of direct messages, but a lot of them are just like, how do I do this? Not, um, or like, what textbooks did you read? And that kind of information is kind of on my page and it's in my highlights. And so it really shows an injector when you're direct messaging them that you have taken the time and you've done your due diligence behind the scenes to kind of figure out what the industry is really like and you've got done like the back the back end of the work and I think that that shows tremendous amounts when you take the extra steps versus trying to just have someone give you the answers if that makes sense. I promise you that injector is going to remember you if you in direct message them something that's unique and different and shows that you've done your due diligence in terms of the industry. I promise you that injector will want to message you back probably more than when you just say, how do I do it? Or how do I get into the industry? Or what do I do? So I will save anyone who's listening that's trying to get into the industry some time. So I DM'd a lot of people, like a lot of people. And probably the most common answer in terms of the best way to prepare yourself for the industry and for these injection classes is to get an in-depth understanding of facial anatomy. Buy the textbooks, take the time to learn the muscles, to learn the blood vessels. Honestly, the best way that I learned the muscles was I am a very hands-on person and I am also very visual when it comes to learning that I had a anatomy coloring book which included all of the facial muscles and I sat at the table coloring all these in then doing my own version of my own skulls drawing my own muscles and labeling them and that's really honestly how I learned the muscles. Do absolutely whatever works for you but I'm telling you that having this um basic understanding of facial anatomy I learned a thousand times more than the other people that were at these injection courses because a lot of them hadn't done any prep work any they were basically just there to figure out if they really liked injecting which I honestly found a little scary that people were poking people in the face with needles without even knowing what muscle they were going into and I think that me 
taking that extra time and having that knowledge already, I think it did help make me stand out when I was taking these courses, which was awesome. Even before I took any hands-on courses, I did find some virtual courses and watched a lot of those and learned a lot from those. So I really would encourage people that are wanting to get into the industry to first find some really good textbooks. I found a lot of textbooks that were recommended to me by other injectors in the industry and you can find those on my highlights on my Instagram. And then I was recommended to the pallet courses online, which um, they're virtual courses that were a lot cheaper than investing in a lot of the hands-on courses. And so at, I think it was like $35 per course. It allowed me to take a bunch of different courses from current injectors in the industry and learn a lot just from watching them inject and them speak on injectables. And so I would really recommend that as well. In terms of the hands-on courses, um, they are fairly expensive. A lot of them are only a day or a couple of days. Um, And so, yes, I use my own money for these courses. Yes, I found all of these courses on my own. And yes, I did a lot of lot of research and uh, read a lot of reviews and asked around about specific courses and what kind of courses to look for and what courses to avoid when I was trying to find courses. My advice is to find courses that are around three to four people to one injector or less. Um, I went to courses that were three to four people and then I even went to a course that was like one to two people um, counting me and you just gain so much more when you have more hands-on and you have the ability to ask questions. Um, Also, in terms of courses, I would look for um, courses that allow you to do off-label things as well. Um, If you find a course that's on-label only, you will get potentially less out of it just because if they're only able to speak to on-label FDA-approved injection sites with certain products, then... It's just not as realistic as um, the industry actually is because a lot of the industry is off-label. So before I finally went to my first hands-on course, I finally um, started working on my aestheticnurse.kiki page on Instagram. I had a lot of posts that were in my drafts and I was very nervous to announced that this was kind of what I was pursuing because once I put it out on social media, I felt like it was either, it was my true commitment. I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it. And it was a little bit scary at first, but I promise so worth it. And I think it was the perfect time to finally launch that because it kind of allowed me to introduce myself to my instructors for these courses prior to them even meeting me, which was really, really nice. Um, I had DM them too to let them know, hey, I'm coming to your course this month for this class. And so that also helped so they kind of could recognize me. And yeah, I would really, really highly recommend um, starting an Instagram Um, reaching out to those future um, educators that you're going to be injecting with. Instagram is the modern day portfolio. So, I mean, in terms of advice for Instagram, I was just as nervous to start mine. I didn't really know where I was going to start before um, really trying to pursue the aesthetic industry. Um, you can ask people on my private Instagram. I'm not a big Instagrammer. Um, I was the type of person to post like once every three to six months. Um, but really was not a big poster, was not really super active in my stories. Um, so this whole adventure with Instagram was all new to me and it was definitely a learn as you go. Um, I'm getting better And I'm getting better with like my, you know, my color scheme and fonts and editing and all of that stuff. But I promise you, just start and then it like will slowly come together. You don't have to have everything together. You don't have to know everything before you start your Instagram. Just start it. One of the big things about aesthetics 
and this industry for me was the fact that um, it's so artistic and it's so free. You're basically, especially with filler, you're able to sculpt someone's face. Um, I loved that artistic aspect of it. I love being able to, you know, help people feel their best. And I also really love that um, you are learning constantly every day, all day. There's always new things. Like, that's with healthcare in general. But lastly, especially in terms of education, even as a nurse in the hospital, I loved being able to educate patients on the why. Um, so they really understood what we were doing, why we were doing it, um, why they were taking that medication, or really how it worked, because I feel like in medicine, people just don't have the time to educate, um, or they don't really know how to educate it in a way that's um, user-friendly to everyone who's, even people that don't have, um, like, a medical knowledge. And so when it came to aesthetics, I just love that opportunity to educate I actually had an experience going to an injector for some Botox, and at the time, I didn't really think anything of it. It was my first time, and I didn't really know what to expect, um, but knowing what I know now, um, I wish that that injector had taken the time to, one, mark my face prior to injection, and two, just really explaining just what was being injected into me, what I can expect um, the do's and don'ts right after injection. And I just felt that with my own experience with being injected, that all kind of lacked. And so I, with my own patients, I just never want them to feel that way. I want to give them all the knowledge, all the education, all the do's and don'ts. And I really want them to feel comfortable in my injection chair and in my knowledge. And I want to make sure that they feel empowered um with the knowledge that i'm giving them about the injectables so what happened once i finally got to the hands-on training um i've already reiterated this but i did so many things that were so far outside my comfort zone um when i got to the trainings i introduced myself um i was asking a lot of questions and if you went to school with me you know that i'm I think I would rather die than ask a question, especially in a large group setting. Um, because you know those people in a classroom that you can tell they're just like focused on asking their question and they're not listening to the instructor. So then the instructor answers the question, but they ask the question anyways. I was never like that. I've always been fairly quiet in the classroom. I've always known my stuff, but I've never wanted to anyone else to really know um that I do know and so yes at these trainings I was probably the that obnoxious girl who was like asking all these questions and asking all these follow-up questions and um I just loved the coursework and the content of aesthetics that it was just so intriguing to me and I had so many questions and at that point I just said I don't care I'm gonna learn as much as I can because I paid for these courses and so really the best thing for me was to get outside of my comfort zone and to ask the questions because again like I had said a lot of the people that were taking these courses were just trying to decide if they even wanted to be in the industry I already knew I wanted it I wanted it so bad and I had so many questions so I was like I'm spending my own money to do this on my days off from the hospital and so I'm gonna get as much as I can from it and I totally did that okay so my first training was at crafted academy um, out in Helena, Montana, uh, run by um, Katie Brennan, Melissa Berg, and then Whitney Carlson. I was so excited and so nervous for this training. Um, I'd never met any of them in person, but obviously Crafted Beauty is amazing. It's the number one med spa in Spokane, and so for me that was like the dream job. I thought that my chances were really slim, but I was going to just impress the crap out of Melissa and hopefully she would hire me. Well, at the training, I told you guys how um, we started the class with going around and introducing ourselves and um, where we're from. And Melissa asked all the girls um, that were from Spokane kind of like 
how they heard of the training or um, just kind of how they were connected. Uh, most of the girls had either known someone that knew Melissa or were currently being injected by Melissa. And then there was me. I say, my mom comes to see you, but she looks nothing like me. And everyone's kind of looking at me, and I'm like, she's blonde-haired, blue-eyed, 5'7", um, and white. And then she's like, who's your mom? Tell her who my mom is. She's like, oh, yeah, oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of how we met. And then um, we did a little bit of, like, didactic work, and then we were breaking off, um, and we'd spend equal amounts of times with each injector um, with a few models. I spent a lot of time with Melissa's sister, Katie. Katie's amazing. Um, I had so much fun training with her. And then um, then I went and saw Whitney, and Whitney's also amazing to train with. It's just so interesting how each injector has their own style of injecting. Um, and it's very apparent all three of those injectors are so different. I was so excited to get then um, go inject with Melissa, but at the time she was pregnant and she's still pregnant, but she was not feeling good. So she wasn't able to get to our group, which I was like, oh my gosh, like that was my opportunity. So at the end of the training, um, we're all kind of congregating in the main lobby of uh, Crafted Aesthetics in um, Helena. And uh, Melissa has come out, and we're all taking photos and everything, and I decided to shoot my shot. I went up to her, and I had just talked about how I was so bummed that I didn't get the opportunity to train with her. And then she asked if I wanted to come shadow her at Crafted Beauty. And... I was like, I didn't expect that. So I was caught off guard, but also so excited. And I was like, how do I get a hold of you? And and I was like, do you want me to DM you? Um, I was probably super awkward, but I just didn't know. I was so excited. And she was like, no, you should come. Um, come shadow me. I'll give you my phone number. So I get Melissa's phone number. And I honestly, I followed up the next day. I texted her the next day, thanking her for the course um, and asking her how I can get this scheduled. I then headed to a training in Lake Oswego um, at Injection U. It was amazing. I spent three days with Jesse Barron and I learned so much. Um, On the third day, we were just chatting um, and I told her that I have a shadowing day um, at Crafted Beauty with Melissa. And she had just asked me um kind of how everything went down and she was like honestly it sounds like it's going to be like an interview she's like just expect it to kind of be like kind of an interview and I was like taken aback I was like I'm a brand new injector I really don't think that she'd be interested in me well Jesse told me just go in just making sure that it's probably an interview. Well, in the time between taking the three-day injection course in Lake Oswego and then um, going and shadowing Melissa, I was actually approached by another local med spa, and I went and had coffee with her. Um, Unfortunately, she was looking for um, an advanced practice nurse, um, to join her practice so that did not work out but I went and shadowed at Crafted Beauty um and I went to lunch with Melissa and she just kind of told me that they're not really hiring but if they were they'd be looking to hire an apprentice um someone that's not injecting right away um someone that can potentially become someone who injects just like her and she had said like let's set up a dinner meeting with um the practice manager which is Kaylin and um her husband which is Ryan so I sent another email after shadowing to follow up with just how amazing the shadowing experience was and then um to schedule a potential dinner Uh, a few weeks go by and then it's dinner Um, I am so nervous (laughs) and, um, 
I don't even know. It was just, it was basically like an interview dinner and I was just sweating the whole time. But they had just talked about the future with Crafted and how I would potentially be someone that they would be looking to onboard and bring on um, more as an apprentice role and that they would get back to me soon. So a couple days go by and then I officially get the offer of becoming Crafted Beauty's first aesthetic medical nurse. And that I could put in my two weeks and could start after that. And when I explain it, it sounds like everything went by so fast. But there was a lot of like in-between time. And there was a lot of long 12 and a half hour shifts at the hospital. And um, a lot of sweat and grunt work put in behind the scenes. And, yeah, it definitely paid off, but it was, it took a lot of work to get there. And I just thank um, Mel Ryan and Kaylin so much for just seeing my potential and seeing my drive and seeing all of the things that um, I had to offer Crafted Beauty. And I also want to reiterate that um, I knew my why. I knew a lot about the industry before taking that class and just trying to decide if I liked it um I think it's really important that you take that time beforehand to figure out why you're doing it um the injection industry while it's so different from the hospital or other types of nursing there it's not as glamorous as everyone makes it seem so if you're really wanting to get into the injection industry because you see injectors on TikTok or you see, I don't know, that you could potentially make a lot of money with injections, then you're not necessarily getting into the injection industry for the right reasons. And so I really hope that you think about it before you really try to pursue aesthetics because being the most authentic and if you're really passionate about it I think that that passion will really show through when you're trying to find a job versus you just wanting to potentially make a lot more money and not work in the hospital anymore. Another reason why it's important to know your why and to know that aesthetics is really for you before um, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on injection courses because I knew my why By the time I had that needle in my hand and I was injecting um, Botox and filler into someone's face, that needle felt so comfortable in my hand and I already knew it was something I wanted to do. I had seen it so many times virtually. I've read it in books. It was just really putting it all together and it all coming together in those hands-on courses. And I had the best time. I knew in that first hands-on course that this is exactly what I want to be doing with my the rest of my nursing career. And so if you take the time, you figure out your why, you take the time to learn your anatomy, you watch those virtual courses before you even consider investing into those hands-on trainings, by the time you get a needle in your hand, you will know exactly what to do. It will feel so comfortable. It will feel so right that that's my best advice for you. Figure out all of those things beforehand just so you're not wasting your money, just so you're not wasting your time. The best part and the best thing about nursing is that that there are so many different specialties to go into and we really are able to kind of hop around and figure out what's best for us. There's no other healthcare provider or um, worker that is able to do that flexibility the way nurses are. So take advantage of that. Um, I hope this was helpful. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to my very first podcast episode. Um, It was definitely a little bit awkward um, filming all of this and putting it all together for you, but I hope it helped some of you out there. Um, I promise you as time goes on, my podcasting skills will get better. But thank you all for listening and to hear more about upcoming guest speakers you can check out the podcast instagram which is aesthetic.chatwithkiki 
You can also find updates on my website, aestheticnursekiki.com. And then my Aesthetic Nurse Injector Instagram is at aestheticnurse.kiki. And that's where you can find all of the aesthetic content, um, keeping up with my journey there. All right. Thank you so much. And have a good day.